Alright guys, I want to show you a couple more things about these crossovers before I solder them up. Um, I will show you after I solder them, I, uh, along with the terminals, and I'll, I'll show you what the terminals look like on the board. Uh, there will be two terminals here for the input and three terminals here for the output. And I'll also show you how to wire those to the speakers before uh, all is said and done. But let me show you uh, some common mistakes that people can and cannot make. First of all, stay organized. When you put these on the board, do yourself a favor and check to make sure you put them on the board correctly. So, first thing is, look at the inductor. All right, there's the inductor there. There's an, another smaller inductor here. A lot of people will get the 10 ohm and 6 ohm mixed up because they look a lot alike, okay? So first thing you wanna do is check to make sure you have the 10 ohm resistor next to the right inductor and we do and then you're going to want to check to make sure you have the right size cap see we should have the 1.5 cap and look what we did we didn't we put the 2.2 there which means that we made a mistake and if we would have tried to do i mean it would have been fine i mean as long as we we knew underneath that it was wrong um but but we want to fix that um and, and then we're going to keep doing that all along. Now, everything else is correct. I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see. It's very simple to make a simple mistake and then wire it up and realize that it doesn't sound right. Okay, especially when you're looking at something in a mirror view like this and then putting it on this board. The easiest way to do, once again, just start with your inductor, 10 ohm, uh, 1.5, oops, 2.2. Now, the next common mistake that most people do is that they will just stick all their wires in the back like this. Um... I don't know about you, but I have no idea what wire belongs to what part. Because they're going everywhere. So what I like to do is I like to put them very easily. Now if you take a look, no, I'm sorry, I like to put them, crisscross them as I put them in. So if you take a look, this is one of the capacitors is either, uh, let's see if I'm looking at this right, this is the resistor 6 ohm, and then this is the inductor, this is the 2.2 UF, and then this would be the 1.5, and then this would be the 10 ohm. So I've crossed the wires here next to each other so that I can easily read, first of all, where they are and where they need to connect. So if I wanted to connect the 1.5 cap UF, which of course I need to still switch these, but if I had the cap 1.5 UF, I would know I want to run the cap 1.5 UF to the 0.22 UF, which should be right here. So I can just take one of these wires and one of these wires, bring them together, and then solder them, making sure that none of the other wires are in the way. Um, it's very easy to read. The inductors I typically push along to the side. Um, if you want to mark, like for me, I know that this is the center. But if you're not sure that's the center, you might want to put like a C there on your board. Uh, and also a C here. I will show you that on this particular board, if you notice, both of the resistors, 6 and 10 ohm resistors, are pretty small. I mean, I'm probably going to have to solder another wire to connect these to whatever they're supposed to connect to. Um, in fact, I'm supposed to connect the 10 to 6 ohm resistors. These are supposed to be able to connect to each other. If you notice, those are definitely never going to connect. So I'll solder a piece of wire into there on both sides in order to make sure those connect properly. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see that and double check your work before you get soldering. Now, I'll go ahead and fix that mistake and hopefully save you guys even more mistakes in the future. Thanks.